Hey everybody, in this tutorial we're going to look at one of the most important objects in Max, which is poly tilde. And poly tilde is a way of creating multiples in Max, because if you're creating three or four or five copies of something, that's manageable in a Max patch. But what if you want 20 or 100 or 1,000? Poly tilde allows you to take a sub patcher and multiply it uh, across many instances and manipulate those instances either together or individually. Now the tilde in poly is because the original purpose of the poly tilde object was to create polyphonic synthesizers, synthesizers that could make more than one sound at a time. But uh, like a lot of things in Max, uh, the tilde is just there to show that this object is compatible with sound. But in this example, I'm actually going to show it to you with video. And then in a later tutorial, we're going to look at Polly's original purpose, which was to make polyphonic synthesizers. Um, but for now, we're just going to look in general at how poly tilde allows us to create many instances of a sub patch. So let's just start with a very simple uh, video structure with a jit.world. We'll make it float. And by using enable one, I don't need to specifically turn it on. It will be on by default. And we're going to take a very simple jit.movie, which we did look at last semester, even though mostly we use jit.playlist. Um, but jit.movie is a simple movie player. We'll hook up a P window to it so we can see the output of the movie player, and we'll send it to a layer. Now to prepare to work in poly, we need to get in the habit of naming our JIT world and assigning our GL objects to it. So we'll just call this world, world, JIT.world, world. And this is an arbitrary name, I'm putting it in all caps because you could put anything you want here. And we're specifically saying that this layer is going to be placed into this world, JIT.layer world is a layer that exists in world, world. And we can see that our window now shows the layer and is named world. And I'll read in a movie. I'll read in one of the built-in movies in Max. Countdown dot move. You should all have this because it comes standard with Max. Begins playing automatically and plays on the layers. Just a little, little countdown. So if we wanted to create multiple copies of this, the conventional way to do it in Max is just to duplicate. And that's fine to make a bunch of these, and obviously each one could have its own position, each one could have its own scale, its own color. What poly tilde allows us to do is to make an arbitrary number of these. So let's encapsulate this, and now it's functioning from inside the patcher. If we open up the patcher, we see it's created an inlet. And poly tilde functions very similarly to a patcher with a, a small difference. Instead of the inlet type that's ordinarily created, we're going to use a new inlet type called in, in one. And in one will send messages to the jit.movie. And because we also have a layer, I'm going to create an in two that communicates with the layer. So now my sub patch is no longer going to work as a normal max patch because I've replaced my inlets with the in1 and the in2 object. So what I'll do now is save this patch. I'll call it poly parent and then save this patcher. as layer a 
underscore poly dot maxpad. And now I can get rid of this patch where I don't need it anymore. What I'm going to do instead is I'm going to say poly tilde layer underscore poly 20. And that will make 20 copies of this patch. And see now it says layer poly with one in parentheses. This is instance number one of layer poly. And there's 20 of these inside the poly tilde. So how do I get to them? By specifying target zero, I can send a message to all 20 copies. So target zero, read countdown movie. It's going to load countdown movie into all 20 of them. Now you can only see one because they're all stacked on top of each other. So let's scale them down. I'm going to say target zero, scale 0 0.2. And I'm sending this scale into the right inlet because the right inlet is connected to my layer. So now they're small, and now I can address individual copies. So I'm going to say target one, meaning the first out of the 20 instances that I've created. Position 0 0.500, color 1001. So it's going to move it to the right, and it's going to make it red. Okay, so now 19 of them are stacked up here, but one of them I made red and moved to the right. Let's do this with another one. I'll say target two. So instance number two of this patch, I'll position to the left and I'll make it green. And I could go through and manipulate all 20 copies of this independently. And of course, I could read a different movie into different instances. So I'll say target 20, read crash test dot move. And that has sound, so I'm also going to send it the volume zero message. And now the 20th instance has a different movie in it. So to start with, let's just scatter all 20 randomly around the screen so that we can see what's happening. I'll use an Uzi 20. And the right outlet of Uzi sends which bang so it's going to generate 20 bangs out of the left outlet. And the right outlet is which bang is being generated. So if I print that, here's my max window. If I print this, I see it prints 1 through 20. So there's a one-based counter out of the right outlet saying which bang has just been generated there. And that is a perfect thing for us to connect to the target message. Target dollar sign one. So now each bang of this Uzi is going to target a different layer within the poly. And let's just position them randomly on the screen. We'll give them a random X position and a random Y position using the bangs from the Uzi. And we'll scale that so that Values between 0 and 19 will be scaled to minus 1, which is the left edge of the screen, to 1, which is the right edge of the screen. And it 
scale them from minus one to one, the top of the screen to the bottom of the screen, or actually the bottom of the screen to the top of the screen. We'll pack these two floating point numbers, and we'll use them as our position. So this will take all 20 instances and scatter them randomly around the screen. Can of course encapsulate this. Call it scatter. And this, of course, can be applied to any aspect of the layers. So we could randomly scale them just by modifying our subpatch. And saying, I'm going to scale from 0.1 to 0.5. So from one tenth normal size to half normal size. And this is going to be scale. And now they're being scaled randomly and positioned randomly. Now one of the things that you're probably wondering is, okay, I, so I can get them random, but what if I want them ordered or organized in some way? It's a little bit trickier, but it's the same basic concept. I can again start with an Uzi 20. And here I have to do a little bit of math. Same structure here, using the Uzi's index outlet to target. And then I'm going to divide these 20 into rows and columns, five across and four down. So since the counter outlet of Uzi is one based, I'm going to subtract one. And then I'm going to use modulo and divide to separate into rows and columns. And again, I'll scale. And I'm just putting in some imprecise values here. Just to roughly lay these out on a grid. So first I'll get them all to be the same size, and now I will grid them. There we go. Spread them out a little bit on the X. That's nice. So what's happening here is that the count is coming out and we're taking the modulo 5, which means we're wrapping around 5. So instead of going 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, the wrapping around 5 is going to make it go 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. Ah, this is actually an error. That's why I had to increase that. There. Yes, 
zero one two three four zero one two three four zero one two three four. It's wrapping twenty around five, so it becomes zero through four repeated four times. And here we're doing the same thing with the rows. We're taking twenty and dividing it by five integer, not floating point integer, meaning we're throwing away the decimal portion. We're throwing away the remainder. So this is going to give us zero 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 one 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 two 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 three 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 three, and that's why I'm doing scale zero through three along the y axis. And so we can see number one, which is red, is here in the first position. Number two, which is green, is here in the second position. And number twenty, where we change the movie, is in the last position. And all of this functions together so that while things are in a grid we can also randomly scale them. They're still in a grid as you can see but they're changing scale. Or we can scatter them around the screen, restore their scale but they're still scattered, put them back into a grid. And of course any of these can be manipulated individually. So change target 5 to yellow. And stop it. And note, the stop is going to have to go to the left inlet of poly tilde because the left inlet of poly tilde is the one connected to the jit.movie object. So now this one has stopped. And I can make it jump back to the beginning. So now I've stopped movie number five and frozen it on frame zero. So you could see how powerful this is. Each of these can have a different movie in it. Uh, a live, you could have a live image going into one of these. Or, or that would need to be set up in the poly tilde. So this is just a quick introduction to poly tilde to give you a sense of the power of creating multiple instances of sub -patchers.